नमस्कार एंड गुड इवनिंग एवरीबॉडी आई वेलकम वंस अगेन ऑल ऑफ यू टू दिस वेबिनार सीरीज ऑन वेस्टर्न फिलोसफी जॉइंटली होस्टेड बाय फिलोसफी फैमिली एंड विजडम इंटेलेक्चुअल फोरम पूरी ओवर द लास्ट few sessions we were having uh, talks on rationalism with reference to uh, various issues in the philosophies of descartes spinoza and leibniz well during the course of the last lecture professor uh, Pramod Kumar Das spoke on knowledge, truth, and harmony with reference to the philosophy of Leibniz. Well, uh, today uh, Professor Das will not be taking uh, any philosopher individually; rather, uh, he will be speaking on the general claims of rationalism with reference to Descartes, Spinoza. and leibniz i hope this effort would be a great one because he will be um, trying to see uh, the trends of rationalism in these three thinkers let us now move to professor das what he has got to store in, uh, for all of us let's see over to professor das for the lecture professor das namaskar <clears throat> all of you am i audible sir both sir audible and visible thank you uh, esteemed dr rao very esteemed participants of this session actually today uh, i had plan to start empiricism the philosophy of john lock but i thought before uh, discussing empiricism let us have a um, revisit to the claims of rationalism what we have already discussed Um, in the philosophy of Descartes, Spinoza, and Leibniz, the contribution of rationalist philosophers and also empiricist philosophers are recognized by Immanuel Kant. it is not that uh, empiricism is criticized by rationalism and rationalism is criticized by empiricism immanuel kant has beautifully said that both rationalism and empiricism are necessary for human knowledge <coughs> in spite of the best uses of both empiricism and rationalism still there is a limit to human knowledge human knowledge is limited to this empirical world human knowledge is limited to the real map real relativity and human knowledge cannot reach the noumena cannot describe the ultimate reality so we shall discuss that uh, in the philosophy of immanuel kant but today we shall discuss what was the contribution of descartes Spinoza and Leibniz 
separately, individually, how they have contributed to uh, the development of rational, rationalism. <coughs> There are two um, types of inquiry, human inquiry. One is the inquiry through sense organs, through indriyas, through sense experience. And the other inquiry is through reflective thinking, logical thinking. Rational thinking through mind. And these two are the human possibilities. Either we shall rely on our sense organs and we shall conclude accordingly. We shall have our world view, we shall have our ethics, we shall have our convictions about the social life, about the empirical world. According to our philosophy, if we believe in experience as the source of knowledge, then that is a that is a way of inquiry and that is a way of living because philosophy is the way of life philosophy is also a way of living so what is that way empiricism is philosophy rationalism is philosophy so which way we can go. We choose our path, we select our way of life according to our convictions. If we are convinced by our sense experience that this knowledge is authentic, this knowledge is practical, this knowledge is scientific, this knowledge is verifiable, then we shall have a particular way of life. And the other way, that is the rationalistic way, they will claim that we are different from animals. We have a mind. And that is our privilege. We are blessed with a very sophisticated mind next to God. Next to God, we have a very intelligent mind, very sophisticated mind, which can understand the eternal truth, which can understand logic, which can understand mathematics, which can have intuition and which can do deduction. From one thought, we can jump to another thought. If we claim that we are human beings and we are ignorant of the capacity of a human mind, the ability of a human mind, the possibility of a human mind, then we are just like animals. Because animals have sense organs, human beings have sense organs. Rather, the sensation or the, um, um, the knowledge through sense experience Many times that is better in animals. If we shall take the possession of indriyas and the possibility of empirical knowledge or uh, knowledge through experience, in many uh, aspects animals are better than human beings. 
what animals can perceive, human beings can't. There are so many examples and I have also discussed. We can see a distant thing because our eyesight has limits. We use spectacle and power glass to manage, because we are intelligent, we can use. But a parrot can see a small seed, small paddy in the bushes from a long high, long distance, from a um, um, considerable height. A parrot can see the paddy in the bushes which we fail to perceive. Similarly, dogs can smell better than human beings. Similarly, a tiger can run better than human beings. And spiritually also, spiritually, when we are discussing about the control of sense organs, only human beings are such creatures in the creation of the divine, divine who have no control over their sense organs. Animals have. Spiritually, they are more groomed. Animals are more, they, they, they are unconscious. They don't know what is spirituality. But if we shall observe the animal quality and human quality, animal responses and human responses, so far as our sense organs are concerned, they are more spiritual, they are more cultured, more groomed by human beings. I told that so far as the sensuous ability is concerned, animals are better than human beings. They have more ability. Similarly, in spirituality, though they are not conscious of uh, the theory of spirituality, but they are groomed, they are cultured, they are um, they are satisfied. Suppose you know, animals animals never overeat. Human beings overeat. Human beings eat after eating. Human beings eat the uh, take the possession of others. That is called greedy. Animals don't have that quality. They have hunger, we have hunger, but our hunger has no limit. If we take some food, if um, um, after that also we are, we are offered the best food, then we can take. But a tiger will not take food. If the stomach is full. A dog will not take food, the stomach is full. They are not worried about the future food, what they will eat at night or what they will eat next, next day. We possess for seven lives. My son will enjoy, my grandson will enjoy. Who will enjoy? God knows. Who will enjoy the father's property? God knows. But we have that desire. So, so we fail to control our sense organs. And we believe that through that sense organ, we can have knowledge. How is it not a mockery? We, we believe that knowledge through sense experience, knowledge through our sense organs, that is more scientific because it is practical. 
but at the same time we fail to control our sense organs there is no rape in uh, animal kingdom no rape the sex is very natural in case of animals and the sex is only possible between two mature um, mature uh, animals that the male and the female both are grown up both are mature physically and there is a season there is a particular time and uh, um, it is a natural process but there is a rape in possibility of rape is there in in case of a human beings a man of 60 years can rape a child of 6 years who does not know anything about sex how natural it is that means we don't have control over our sense organs sense appetites very sensitive very sensitive there is no police station for animals that the dog gundas went to another street and they murder other dogs and there is theft case no no police station for animals police station is only and jail also that is only for human beings so this is the limit of a man limit in both empiricism and rationalism now i am talking about the limit of empiricism limit of sense organs so far as the ability is concerned animals are better than human beings so far as the sanskara is concerned grooming culture is concerned animals are better than human beings but we claim we are rational we are social we don't have any right to kill animals for food we give because we are rational we give different types of logic that there will be, there will be balance in the ecosystem we we'll keep many types of logic we 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 can kill animals because we can kill because we are powerful because we have skill so from that we can we can um we can say that how far we are rational how far we are social that for food we can kill animals for our uh, furniture we can kill the life of a plants and the human being is the only being only creature who depends upon animals and plants for his own survival not by his versa if the last plant will be cut last plant then human beings will survive only for 6 hours no human being will survive if the last plant will be cut that means human beings are nature dependent so our sense organs our ability becomes our liability who are my enemies my sense organs are my enemies my sense experience is my enemy 
my empirical knowledge is my enemy my conviction is my enemy that means myself is the enemy of myself i am my own enemy because i have sense organs but i misuse my sense organs <clears throat> and when the sense organs are misused we cannot have perfect knowledge sense organs are the mediums of empirical knowledge no doubt we perceive the things the objective things the outside things through our sense organs and by that we 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 have our experience we have our empirical knowledge that's true but how far they are authentic this is one problem the second problem is we claim that we have human minds and we have an ability of thinking that is also problem because in rationalism the instrument is logic as in empiricism the instrument is perceiving when we claim that we are rational that means we understand how to use logic logic means what logic means to understand the relation between different ideas some ideas are there and we have to see the relation between these ideas this is the function of logic which does not need the outside empirical world it does not need if i am confined to a closed room then i can do logic i can do mathematics i can do geometry without the help of the empirical world this possibility is there with human beings but what is the demerit of this the demerit is that because we can provide logic to justify our claim because they are deducible the ideas are deducible so that becomes a, that becomes very formal it has nothing to do with our practical life some of the problems are settled formally intellectually logically and we are satisfied it has nothing to do with our practical life the empirical life number 1 number 2 if logic is the source of our conviction then we can justify a something um, we can justify a bad thing as good justify bad as good and we can also justify good as bad because in logic we are not concerned with truth and falsity so the claim of rationalism is not is not truth and falsity rationalism does not claim what rationalism does not claim that we are discussing Rational, rationalism does not claim what is true and what is false this is the claim of empiricism empiricism is interested in the truth and falsity correspondence theory of truth my statement corresponds to the fact then this fact is accepted as true it does not correspond and it is therefore it is false but in logic in rationalism we don't claim the truth and falsity in the logic we claim the validity and invalidity of our thought process 
whether our thought process is the right process or not, is the valid process or not. And how can it be determined? Our thought is valid, or the thought process is valid, or the deduction is valid, if it is according to some logical formal rules. Some rules are there. If the deduction process, the thinking process, is according to these laws, laws of thought and the other logical rules are, are also there. If our thought process follows the logical principles, formal principles, then our argument is valid. It has nothing to do with truth and falsity. If all the propositions are false, if all the propositions are false, then also an argument can be valid. Because in order to be an argument valid, it is not necessary whether the propositions are true or false. It is necessary that whether there is a necessary connection between the premise and conclusion. What you are saying and what you are concluding. Is the, is the, the, there is a necessary connection between that or not. And if it is according to the logical rules or not. Whatever you may say through a proposition, it does not matter. Whatever you may say, it does not matter. It matters that whatever you are saying in the premise and the conclusion, whether they are connected or not. There is no question of aesthetic, whether they are looking beautiful or not. There is no question of ethics in logic, whether when the conclusion follows from the premises, there is no question of ethics. There is no question of aesthetic. There is no question of truth value. There is only the question of the right process, the mathematical process. Mathematical process. So what is the claim of rationalism? Rationalist philosophers claim that our statements must be universal and must be necessary. Universal and necessary. And it is, it, is, it is not necessary that our statement should be ethical. It is not necessary that our statement is um, beautiful, aesthetic. No sense of aesthetic, no sense of ethics is necessary in the validity and invalidity of an argument. But our claim is, whatever shall we say, we shall speak about the universality and necessity. Duty should be done for the sake of a duty. Kant's categorical imperative. Duty should be done for the sake of a duty. That means, if you think that this is duty, you have to do it, whatever may be the consequence. Because if you, if you calculate the consequence, then it is not universal. It is not universal. As geometry is universally true, wherever you go, and in whichever time you think of a triangle, a triangle must have three angles, 
and the sum total of three angles must be equal to two right angles. Wherever you go, beyond all formalities, beyond all um, perspectives, space, time, person, surroundings, your mood, whether you are in a good mood or bad mood, whether you are in a marriage party or you are in a um, um, funeral ceremony, wherever you, go, you are, the knowledge of the mathematics and the knowledge of the geometry will remain same. That should be the status of a human knowledge. So, if our knowledge is universal and necessary, then this can be accepted as the most authentic source of knowledge. The knowledge that is conditional, the knowledge that varies, that cannot speak of the eternal truth. Because what is truth? And truth is non-contradictory by nature, satyam abadhitam. So, if this is the status of truth, our, the status of knowledge should be according to the status of the truth. As truth is unalterable, similarly knowledge should be unconditional. And this is the human possibility that man can understand the universal application of his region. Man can understand mathematical principles, mathematical deductions. Therefore, there is mathematics and geometry. But the point is, mathematics and geometry are not created by man. They are eternal truths. They are eternal truths. If they have been created by man, then we can say that man can cancel mathematics, man can reject mathematics, man can destroy mathematics. No. Man cannot destroy mathematics. A plus B whole square, A square plus B square plus 2 B. It is not the creation of a man. It is the eternal truth. A triangle has three angles and all the definitions, all the axioms of um, um, geometry, they are not created by man. Similarly, the relation between the premise and the conclusion, that is not created by the logicians or by the author of the book or by man. The relation between the premise and the conclusion is a necessary relation and that is a universal relation. This is the claim of rationalism. What is the claim of empiricism? Implicit philosophers claim that universality and necessity are impossible. Because we are living in the empirical world, in this empirical world, everything is relative. So, our claim is the practical life of human being. What we see, that may be appearance, that may not be truth. But we have to compromise with that appearance. We have to live our life with that appearance. We have to live with the diversities. We have to live with our limitations. And that is the practical life. So their claim is knowledge should be objective. Knowledge should be objective. So rational philosophers claim that knowledge must be universal and necessary. Implicit philosophers claim that knowledge must be objective. 
Therefore, Immanuel Kant said, knowledge must be universal, necessary, and also objective. He reconciled these two claims. What you are claiming? Your knowledge must be universal and necessary. That is true. I accept. What is your claim? Your knowledge should be objective. I accept. So knowledge must be objective and at the same time universal and necessary. No interpretation of mind without perception. When you are going to interpret something that is rooted in the perception. So from, from sense experience, you collect the data, but mere collection of data is not enough. The data are categorized into proper understanding by the use of certain a priori forms and we make judgments. So for judgment that grass is green, grass and green, they are separately perceived. Grass is perceived, green is perceived. But the judgment is not possible. Grass is green. This propositional judgment is not possible without a, a synthesizing instrument that is human mind. So we cannot ignore empiricism which provides us the data and also we cannot ignore the mind that synthesizes the data and makes judgments. So both are necessary. So knowledge must be universal, necessary and objective. In inductive logic, um, <coughs> when we say about um, uh, inference, inference that is another source of knowledge, that inference is both deductive and inductive. In case of inductive inference, we rely on imprecision as the source of knowledge. We observe some instances. It's a very, very simple thing. We all know inductive way of knowing. We observe some particular cases. In a medical sense also we do that. When new diseases are coming, like Corona and others, we, we, our experiment is based upon this inductive process. We experience some facts, we enumerate some facts, we observe some facts, and from that limited observation, limited observation means observation of some instances, we give a general conclusion. And this is very natural. And this is accepted as a scientific. If there is any scientific inquiry, then this is the scientific inquiry. The inductive process is the scientific process. That we can't know, we can't know the vast reality. Implicit philosophers admit this. Implicit philosophers admit this. Locke has admitted this. Immanuel Kant has admitted this. That the reality is so complex. It is so vast that the human beings cannot know each and every aspect of the reality. This is a fact that we have to accept. But we are helpless. We have to know through our sense organs, otherwise we don't have any other access. Because through the help of our logic, through the help of mathematics, we cannot do any work in the laboratory. 
we can drive a car through mathematics and logic we can take our food through mathematics we can sleep through mathematics suppose i am i am um, um, sleeping there are certain mathematical equation yeah, uh, i shall uh, say it in the computer then okay now i shall sleep no this is a biological process i shall take my food i shall sleep i shall work i shall do other works i shall observe these are the empirical activities which are not possible through mathematics and logic mathematics and logic they help us understanding the necessary connection between ideas and concepts that is also necessary i said i will shall discuss but so far as our practical life is concerned so far as i am telling all these things because in the next session we shall enter into the discussion of empiricism we should not be biased by rationalism we have to because we are rational we have to understand the limit of rationalism and also of empiricism and that is immanuel kant who understood the limit of rationalism and the limit of empiricism and therefore he could reconcile both and after the reconciliation he declared that in spite of the best use of empiricism and rationalism human knowledge is still limited limited to the empirical world limited to the phenomenal world that means the sum total of human intelligence is also a limit to the knowledge of the noumena sum total the all the possibilities of human knowledge they are confined to this empirical world so in inductive logic what we are discussing in inductive logic we examine some instances then we maintain a gap and we give a general conclusion if we if we are asked how you could you make a generalization from the um, limited enumeration limited observation limited examination of the facts then implicit philosophers claim or inductive logicians claim that there are some grounds of induction the law of causation law of uniformity of nature by on that ground we we can jump from some to all again that is question that you are speaking of a law of uniform nature this is a universal statement that nature behaves uniformly how did you know every when must have a cause how can you know about every how can you know about all how can you say that in every case nature behaves uniformly how you can't use every all because that is not the dictionary of inductive logic you can't use that you can use that in conclusion only you cannot use that in the premise so you cannot take that ground because that will be again involved as another induction this is the problem with the induction similarly in deductive logic they start with a universal statement that all men are mortal ram is a man ram is mortal now the question is where from you got that all men are mortal because that is proved fallacious in inductive logic that is probable because there is an inductive belief so where inductive logic ended with a fallacious conclusion generalization all men are mortal you start from that that means you start from a general 
um, assumption and you then follow you, you are trying to detect all men are mortal ram is a man ram is mortal the question is how did you know that all men are mortal again you come back to the experience here the nasty philosophers claim that our all men are mortal the statement all men are mortal is not an empirical statement it is not derived from sense experience all men are mortal this sentence this this sentence used in inductive conclusion is different from the deductive premise in inductive conclusion all men are mortal that is based upon experience therefore it is probable but in deductive logic the all men are mortal is not an empirical statement then what it is they say that it is decision 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 implicative statement for example we are not concerned with the truth and the falsity we do not know whether all men are mortal or not we have no interest at all to know inductive logic says they have interest to prove that all men are mortal all crows are black they have that interest we are not interested for the truth and the falsity of the fact that we, that all men are mortal we are not interested we are interested only in implication then what is our what is our argument now our argument is like this if all men are mortal if we don't give guarantee we don't know anything if all men are mortal if ram is a man then ram is mortal okay this can be done here there is no question of uh, empirical test whether all men are mortal or not because in deductive logic it's not concerned with it truth and falsity if then if so and so then so and so now rationalist philosophers claim now you say if the critics they are asking to the critics now you say whether our conclusion follows from the premises or not if all men are mortal if ram is a man then ram is mortal whether this argument is valid or invalid implicit philosophers will say yes it is valid now if it is valid then we are also not interested in aesthetics aesthetics means which appears to be beautiful all men are mortal appears to be beautiful we can hear it we can listen it ram is a man appears to be beautiful and ram is mortal appears to be beautiful but we can use any sentence going beyond aesthetics going beyond ethics also how now if all if all men are monkeys it does not look beautiful or if all girls are ghosts it does not look beautiful but we can have an argument if all men are monkeys if um ram is a man then ram is a monkey that means we are not concerned with the beauty of a statement the truth of a statement and the ethics of a statement we are only concerned with the logical formalities then in principle suppose to claim if this is your stand if this is your contribution we have we don't need your rationalism this is purely formal what it how it helps you god knows this is not this is not our interest our interest is with the fact so there is a conflict between fact and validity 
valid thinking and factual thinking whether my thinking is my my thought process is valid this is one question and the other question is whether my thought is factual or objective these two claims stand opposite to each other but these two claims are reconciled in immanuel kant immanuel kant said that thought must be objective thought must be objective and that is the kantian revolution also he made a revolution that thought must be objective and at the same time thought must be universal thought must be necessary and immanuel kant <coughs> not only spoke this in the field of epistemology he applied this in morality categorical imperative duty should be done for the sake of duty human moral character should be like this should be like mathematics and at the same time immanuel kant has respected the claim of empiricism that thought must be objective because that is the base without that base man cannot man can't think at all because a grinder needs something to grind a grinder does not grind itself so the grinder needs some matter some ob objects to grind so mind is not a my mind is not a, not no it's not an intellectual entertainment it is not an instrument of entertainment mind should be used very logically but mind is useless without the empirical content without the empirical content so empirical content must be there so here here what is the empirical content na the empirical content is our society the empirical content is our education the empirical content is our poverty the empirical content is our employment employment crisis the empirical um, 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 uh, content is our practical life if we shall be a true rationalist then all these practical aspects of life are are ignored we shall become just machines we shall just we, we are just machines a mathematical mind a geometrical mind without having the empirical content we have our family we have emotion we have we have um, we have our taste of life we have our judgment we have our likes dislikes we have our society all these are the empirical content the practical content of human life so only mathematical logical geometrical rational formal thinking can't help us can't have any contribution for this if we shall be only rational similarly without rationality without the universal approach the holistic approach the rational approach the logical way of thinking we cannot manage this empirical content successfully those who are only engaged in the empirical contents they are called materialists materialist people they ignore the rational ability the rational possibility they ignore the art of synthesizing because they 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 are only concerned with the empirical content so the empirical content and the rational content these two make a make the human personality as the complete personality purna vyaktitva so man is both man has physical existence and man has psychological existence 
and man has also spiritual existence these three existence should be synthesized otherwise man is incomplete so what are the claims of uh, what are the claims of rationalism the claim of rationalism is epistemological rationalism has no contribution for any other aspect of human life rationalism has the major contribution for epistemology that i shall give a um, very good foundation of uh, epistemology that reason is the source of knowledge universality and necessity that is the hallmark of uh, human knowledge knowledge must be universal because truth is universal so in in order to understand the eternal truth in order to understand the eternal truth the universality and the necessity aspect of knowledge is necessary these philosophers the implicit philosophers claiming that that the reality is complex the reality is relative reality is relative and for the understanding of relativity we need sense experience we need sense experience because that is practical that is practical because i have i my i will come in contact with the object i can avoid it because i have other sense organs these sense organs will come in contact with the external world i can avoid it so sense experience is natural sex sense experience must be there but we should control our sense organs we have to groom our sense organs and for that grooming rationalism is necessary only a rational mind can help us grooming the sense organs and that is the difference between man and the animal animals have sense organs we have sense organs animals depend upon their sense organs we depend upon our sense organs but animals they don't have capacity of grooming but they are groomed they are naturally groomed we have a capacity of grooming but we are not groomed that is the human crisis animals don't have capacity of grooming their sense organs but naturally they are groomed we have the capacity of grooming our sense organs but we are not grooming we are not doing that so the complete personality is the synthesis between the rationalism and implicitism a very good thought very cultured mind and very groomed sense organs then we can have a complete personality i shall speak only 10 minutes more this was my introduction from this i shall take only take 10 minutes i shall conclude now we shall discuss about descartes spinoza and leibniz how they contributed this framework is there this introduction is there this is rationalism this is implicitism and this is the synthesis that we can have a both rationalism and implicitism now come to descartes descartes started his philosophy very beautifully therefore he became the father of modern philosophy modern european philosophy his starting point was the universal doubt that means i can't accept anything which is not true by its own evidence that means truth is self evident so if the truth is not self evident any truth that is doubtful so a true rationalist should should go in the search of 
the self evident truth the most clear and distinct perception which cannot be doubted by anything else this is a very beautiful starting and this is this this is a rational starting this is not an empirical starting whatever we have we have whatever we have we have but now reject everything reject all views reject whatever we perceive let us doubt everything and from that doubt we can reach at a point that the very doubting is cannot be doubted and this statement is not an empirical statement this is this statement comes from our intuition the very interesting point is that many philosoph many 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 scholars think that intuition is only an only a method of rationalist philosophers no both rationalist philosophers and implicit philosophers believe in intuition both we shall discuss in the philosophy for lock berkeley and hume how they believe in intuition intuition is common to both rationalism and implicitism they differ in deduction and induction rationality philosophers rationality philosophers uh, take the help of intuition for deduction implicit philosophers take the help of intuition for induction this is the difference so intuition is all right intuitively i came to know intuitively i came to know that i cannot doubt that i doubt cogito ergo sum i think therefore i exist so this way this way is a very beautiful starting point starting very beautiful start but decker ended with failure he accepted a double dualism mind and body and the uh, absolute substance and relative substance this is a failure and the second failure is if you claim that you are a rationalist you should be a free thinker because your starting point was that but maximum western philosophers they are not free from theology they fear the christian theology the pope of the church and in fear of that they change their philosophy they compromise with their philosophy and they are bound to establish god establish god if god will not be there in their the philosophy then they may be punished and they may be killed also this is this is a question of survival but in but in our culture it is not there so this is the failure of decker decker introduced god in the fear of church in the fear of christian theology and he gave some uh, um, proofs causal proofs ontological proof uh, cosmological proofs these are not satisfactory this is only the play of reason so this is the end of uh, decker then spinoza spinoza did better because spinoza did not introduce god as a religious god spinoza said that my god is an intelligible god that means my god is a mathematical god my god is derived from the mathematical understanding so i don't compromise with the christian theology but what is the what was the problem of spinoza spinoza rejected dualism and accepted monism that's that's good but spinoza gave the autonomy of substance or the power the infinite power to one that one substance is that and that is god and that god is also not a religious god that is a conceptual god that is an intellectual god and the entire the, um, 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 the um, jagat that is the modification of, of 
the one substance. And he said many things that, that there are infinite attributes and the human being mind can grasp only two attributes and the entire modifications are the modifications of these two attributes. That means that is the state of human ignorance. Beyond that human ignorance, there are other attributes, other modifications are there. But Spinoza explained all these things only on the basis of mathematics and geometry which stands only thermal. It is not practical. Then came Leibniz. Leibniz says not, not one substance. Not one substance. Rather everyone, everyone is a substance. Everyone is a substance. Leib Leibniz gave importance to the individuality. And he derived this also from mathematics. From mathematics, Descartes derived the um, self-evident truth, that knowledge must be self-evident. From mathematics and geometry, Spinoza derived that truth must be one, truth must, must be unconditional, truth must be non-contradictory. And from mathematics, Leibniz derived the principle of individuality, the principle of continuity, the principle of harmony. So the mathematics is the same. Because we have, we have rational ability, because we can use reason, we can understand mathematics in different ways and we can create our philosophy according to the different understanding of mathematics. So Descartes followed mathematics in one way, Spinoza followed mathematics in another way, Leib Leibniz followed mathematics in another way. And Leibniz made the entire world spiritual, that each and every particle is self-sufficient, that is a complete monarch which can express the entire, man, entire, entire reality. Whatever is in a small atom, that is also in the entire reality. Each and every particle is true, each and every particle is real, and each and every particle is conscious force. That is the Chetana. This appears to be more uh, authentic, the philosophy for Leibniz, because here the individuals are given importance. So in the last session we were discussing in the philosophy of Leibniz, the contribution of uh, philosophy of Leibniz is that if each monad is important, if each monad is conscious, we can this can be applied to our society that in, in society every individual has his own contribution. Every individual should be groomed. No individual should be ignored. If we say that we are social, then nobody should remain in starvation. Nobody should be deprived of the common privilege of life. Because each and every individual contributes to humanity. So this is the contribution of Leibniz. That in the name of universalism, in the name of integralism, in the name of rationalism, we should not ignore the growth and uh, the growth of the individual. So every individual should be respected. But in total, if we discuss rationalism, in one sentence we can say, rationalist philosophers give a focus on the rational way of thinking. That is necessary. But that is not enough. That is not the whole life. Our rational ability is necessary. Many people are there in the village, they don't know logic. They are not so rational, but they are moral. It is not necessary that a man of rationality will become a man of morality. Not necessary. A villager does not know a very simple person does not know any ethics also, theory of ethics, theory of logic. But they are living 
very perfect life. So rationality is not morality. Rationality is not spirituality. So rationality should remain as an instrument, to, should remain as an instrument to, to grow and glow our personality in the field of ethics and spirituality. Otherwise, this rationality is not rationality, this is no rationality. If, if our rationality does not help us in growing and glowing, prospering in the field of ethics and spirituality, then the better animals are better than us. I gave so many examples how animals are better than us. In the ability of sense organs and in the sanskara. If we have rationality, let us use rationality in the proper way, in a rational way. Rationality should not be used in the sensuous way, as a doctor steals kidney. A doctor is a rational person, very rational, very intelligent, very educated. But that doctor uses his rationality in the sensuous way that I can steal the organ of the patient and I can become rich, materially rich. Rationality should be used in the rational way. Rationality should, not, should be used in the spiritual way. Rationality should not be degraded as the sensuality. So that means rationality should not be misused. So we respect the claim of rationalism that epistemology or human knowledge should be universal and necessary. We agree, but that is not enough. That is not practical. We have to focus on our practical life. Therefore, we have to rely on the scientific approach of life, the practical approach of life, the life of our bread and butter, the life of emotion, the life of our sacrifice, life of our love and affection. Because we are human beings. We are not only rational, we should have emotional, um, uh, we should have emotion. Okay. So, therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita, it is said, Jnana, Karma, Bhakti, Samuche. Rationalism says, you become Jnana oriented. Okay, that's good. Karma will say that you should do right karma. That's good. Bhakti will say you should have affection, love, compassion. That is also good. But one without the others is incomplete and useless. Jnana without karma and bhakti is useless. Karma without jnana and bhakti is useless. And bhakti without jnana and karma is also useless. That, that is not your complete personality. So jnana, karma, bhakti, samuchaya. That means rationalism, empiricism, and spiritualism, samuchaya. These three are required. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Professor Das, for uh, your nice lecture. <clears throat> so, you tried to show the limitations of uh, sense experience by making a reference to animals, how animals are better than human beings. But still, you made an orientation to say that human beings are blessed with a sense of uh, reason and that feature of rationality distinguishes human beings from the animals. Otherwise, if you take sensibilities or sensations into account, in various ways, human uh, the animals fare better. They do better. But it is the human beings 
who have the power of reasoning and you talked of kant who took both empiricism and rationalism to create a synthetic or a critical philosophy without sacrificing either uh, experience or reason so for knowledge both experience and reason are required and what you said during the course of your lecture is that the grooming of sensory experience is required and that grooming is possible through reason and human beings have that facility of grooming their sensations to control their sensations and to put whatever is received through the sensations in the right perspective of reason so that one can orient himself in a moral or a rational path so very nicely you have done so you talked of the limitations of empiricism you said experience can only uh, reach at uh, a sort of probabilities but um, the rationalists do claim something of uh, a knowledge of a universal and necessary sort which experience or empiric empiricism cannot guarantee because empiricism to the best of its height can only reach at probabilities there is no certainty in empiricism but uh, as um, the claims of um, rationalism are that that uh, knowledge should be uh, both universal and necessary now say that we are rational is to say that we are rational because we adhere to the principles of morality so that's a bit of confusion there in your talk which i feel you may clarify uh, during the course of the interaction well thank you sir for your lecture now um, well we we'll look into uh, the chat box um, well uh, we find certain questions well tanushree <coughs> see the question well it's a, a question uh, the general question based on uh, uh, deductive um, reasoning that we have um, and, uh, and 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 the inductive uh, sorry uh, and 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 the the formal validity that we see in deduction which you uh, uh, made in uh, reference to reason is concerned about more about validity it is less concerned about the truth or the falsity of the propositions involved in the argument so c says whether intuition has any role to play well before um, i allow uh, professor das to say on this let me add to it i should say the rationalists are concerned only with the coherence of thoughts okay whatever thoughts you take they should be coherent to one another and that makes the rationalist philosophy consistent so there is no question of intuition in to that sense it is only coherence of thoughts that we uh, take into account, that we must take into account if you are dealing with pure rationalism so over to professor das if he has anything to say on this question of tanushree yeah. <clears throat> two questions uh, one uh, also from your side regarding kant's rationalism and morality yes kant uh, kant is uh, speaking about duty for the sake of duty but um, i told that uh, rationality uh, should not be devoid of the empirical content that is lacking in kant's categorical imperative for example and that is um, very well discussed in the bhagavad gita that uh, duty should be done not only for the sake of duty but also with devotion but with proper knowledge so we have to uh, look after the contextuality we have to understand what duty is duty should be done for the sake of duty that's all right but we have to understand what the duty is in a particular context so there comes the empirical situation we cannot avoid the empirical situation and we cannot leave by a maxim that duty should be done for the sake of duty because the person who will do his duty should know what is duty what is duty for him in a particular situation therefore in the bhagavad gita it is said sadharma sadharma means 
you know the universal dharma but you have to know the contextual dharma that in this particular situation i i i, I should understand what is my duty so in a particular situation in a given situation we shall go against or go beyond the um, the fundamental claim of uh, morality for example a very famous example telling truth is a categorical imperative one must tell truth because tell uh, because truth should be told categorical imperative but in a particular context we have to decide what is my duty is it my duty to speak the truth in this particular con particular context so this question comes similarly in the case of a uh, delivery of a woman we have to save one either the child or the mother so in that case the result will vary because we have to depend upon the situation what is the situation so according to situation according to the context duty should be performed therefore bradley said my station my duty so kant's categorical imperative is formal therefore it is rigorous by nature it should be empirical so kant spoke of in epistemology kant is successful because in epistemology kant took both um, empirical content and rational content that is understanding but in morality kant became only rational kant ignored the empirical situation the contextual situation but that is well explained in the bhagavad gita that so dharma is necessary your um, particular duty in a particular context is necessary number 2 what um, uh, tanushri uh, asked about intuition intuition is a human possibility whether you are um, both the rationalist and empiricist philosophers have intuition both have intuition suppose in in, in rationalism what we uh, we, when we uh, we do deduction that's all right but first we understand first we understand the coherence as you said the coherence between the thoughts that 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 first we understand that understanding comes from our intuition similarly uh, the empiricist philosophers or the scientists when they try to Uh, discover a law or they try to um, observe something minutely in the uh, in laboratory they also have their intuition from that intuition they develop the hypothesis and from that hypothesis they uh, go on experimenting the so both empiricist and rationalist philosophers have their intuition but as you said that in deduction Uh, only thing that matters that is the coherence of the thought that uh, from one thought another thought is deducible this is this is a separate thing uh, i i agree with you thank you okay <clears throat> professor das well um, as you said uh, <clears throat> the blending of experience and reason which can't uh, was more or less successful in the field of knowledge but when he came to the real practical world to the field of morality to the field of ethics mm. he has sacrificed that blending because mm. he was confined to pure reason mm. when mm. you talk of the examples that was um, that sort of blending uh, we can see in the bhagavad gita but that is missing in the kantian tradition because mm. i want to say the blending that is in the empirical in, in, the, in the, the field of knowledge mm. that is missing in uh, mm. the kant in ethics that's mm -hmm. why that's why uh, kant says uh, being rational means being moral because he has mm. but he has, in the process he has diverged mm. the ex, uh, mm. experience the contextuality that bhagavad gita speaks of mm. so that's mm. way, that's how we can speak of the limitation of and, and sir and sir that is a very famous, famous example yes. um, what kant said 
that if he, you have if if you have uh, uh, taken a promise that should be kept promises should be kept and um, uh, if we shall uh, follow Kantian philosophy strictly that is the character of a Bhishma Bhishma Pratigya that is the character of a Karna so that is rejected in Bhagavad Gita yes. we, you have to change your promise Yes. Your promise should be meant for a Lokasandra. Yes. What you promised one day, that is not relevant today. So you change your promise yes. according to the situation. Yes. So, so the, the very example. Is very done in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, branding is very nicely done in Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita. Which, mm. we, which we feel uh, a sort of failure in Kantian ethics. Very, very mm. nicely said. Thank you. Mm. A similar, um, in the similar line of thinking, um, uh, Sravani Mishra Madam, she has. Um, raised not exactly a question well it's a general understand what she says that um, with this uh, um, uh, the way of living uh, should uh, be in such a way that we should think of uh, where's the general question that she says in the in the in the, in the act of morality one should be uh, more concerned about uh, the welfare of uh, the general public while uh, thinking of one one's, uh, one, one's personal uh, welfare and then she has another thing to say um, um, very interesting. Okay, so see, it's, it's a compliment from Sravana Mishra rather, and the other thing which she um, shaped it as a form of question. Well, she was very much happy with your uh, lecture, and she says that she has she has learned um, um, what you said uh, from uh, the side of Western philosophy. And one thing that she um, tried to um, make um, uh, 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 understand to have an understanding that. Uh, based on your uh, talk. So our um, activities should be oriented uh, so that uh, the general public is benefited. So that was um, her conviction. Well, thank you, madam. Well, we move to Sanjeev Burman, who has a, a question. Um, he says, um, huh, he says, if we uh, look into uh, what is reason and what is spirituality, how do you make a distinction between the two? reason and spirituality because you have brought in the ideas of spirituality too during your talk that's why it has uh, brought in a question in the mind of Sanjay Burman he knows he wants to know how to make a distinction between reason and spirituality because ah, yes, this, yes, yes yes this is a very beautiful question and this is the this is the contribution of uh, rationalism because in Indian philosophy uh, we we understand rationalism as the discriminative knowledge, Vivek Gyan, that is called Vivek Gyan. Vivek Gyan is the real rationality, that one can discriminate from good to bad, from right to wrong. Discriminative knowledge is a human possibility, that we can discriminate, and that discriminative knowledge comes in a particular level of consciousness. Okay, because human mind is not static, it is dynamic. It transforms every day by proper education, by proper um, some spiritual practice. Our mind transforms from lower level of understanding to the higher level of understanding. And the more it transforms, the more it becomes able to discriminate between right to wrong and um, good to bad. So that is how in Bhagavad Gita there are two presentations. One is the um, presentation of the common man's mind that is Arjuna and the other is the mind of the wisdom or highly intellectual person. There is the conflict. So one mind is confused. Arjuna's mind is confused because Arjuna fails to discriminate what to do and what not to do. Therefore, Arjuna became confused. And this is a natural phenomena. We all suffer from this discrimination. Sometimes because we are biased. We are biased by the empirical world. We are biased by emotions. We are biased by our attachments. Because of this, this precondition, preconditions, we fail to discriminate. Therefore, in Sankhya system, it is said, that the highest knowledge is the knowledge of the distinction, knowledge of the discrimination between Purusa and Prakriti. 
सो डिस्क्रिमिनेटिव नॉलेज इज द रियल हॉलमार्क ऑफ रैशनलिज्म फॉर एग्जांपल ए चाइल्ड फेल्स टू डिस्क्रिमिनेट बिटवीन ए स्ट्रेंजर एंड द मैन हु इज गुड एंड हु इज बैड but the, the more we become grown up we we are we become able to discriminate this is good this is bad this is right this is wrong so that is called vivek gyan so similarly in one ladder of consciousness we can discriminate what is rationalism and spiritualism there are different levels of consciousness in one level of consciousness we are satisfied with our sensuous activities they are called materialist philosophers they are satisfied with their material prosperity they earn eat sleep build houses and they are satisfied then the next ladder of consciousness or transformation is your intellectual transformation that you are intellectual you have that discriminative knowledge you are a man of logic you are a man of wisdom but that is also not enough so many people they have ego they have they have attachment for their own wisdom that is not spiritualism spiritualism means the complete perfection spirituality means you have to understand the limit of rationalism and empiricism that is spiritualism if you are biased by rationalism you are a rationalist if you are biased by empiricism you are an empiricist if you go beyond that then you are a complete personality that is spiritualism so and the only instrument is human mind so mind binds and the mind liberates this mind is the cause of bondage this mind is the cause of enlightenment knowledge freedom salvation peace this mind therefore the only work we have to do we have to culture our mind logic is necessary but we have to know the limit of logic sensation is necessary we have to know the limit of sensation then we can become spiritual spiritual is a becoming spiritual is not knowledge we have to become spiritual we have to become spiritual means we have to be all inclusive we have to be cultured we have to become that we have to become more real more comprehensive that is spirituality so spirituality is not taught in the classroom spirituality is not taught by, through any uh, spiritual teacher spirituality is only attained by your own sadhana own practice to know your limitation that that is my point and that is the purpose of education if you are really educated we we claim that we are educated then transformation is the goal of um, education if you are not transforming day by day you are not growing and glowing day by day then you are not educated your education has no meaning similarly i gave an example a highly skilled doctor can steal the kidney of patients this is not this he is educated but he is not transformed he is not spiritual spiritual means to love all to accept all to live for others to do something for loka sangra that is spirituality you have to go beyond your own limitations that is spirituality immanuel kant did that in epistemology but he failed to do this in morality but in bhagavad gita this is well explained that man should prosper man should culture should be cultured in gyana 
karma and bhakti if any one is lacking in your personality then you are not a man you are not a complete personality this is the difference between arjuna and lord krishna arjuna has limitations arjuna was not complete in spite of his wisdom arjuna was a man of wisdom arjuna had his power he had skill of war he had everything and he had with him lord krishna as the guide as the mentor in spite of everything arjuna became confused because of his mind because of his limitation of lim, lim, limited mind therefore lord krishna is another model the model of sthita pragya sthira mana understanding mind the mind of wisdom this is the difference so human life is the only chance and a very short life to transform from the state of arjuna to the state of lord krishna this is the point thank you okay what <coughs> professor das said uh, is that you see um, sanjeev barman um, i don't know whether you are a student or something i don't know whether you are a teacher i don't know but still uh, let me tell you one thing the sort of spirituality that professor das is saying is not a belief in some divine force or something like that spirituality means having the knowledge of your level of consciousness you are conscious of your consciousness that is spirituality in the real sense and that knowledge cannot be diverse from rationality mm. they go hand in hand mm. and that is the discriminative knowledge having that discriminative knowledge is spirituality having um, this is this is the point actually and and becoming and becoming and spirituality is become and, and you have you, to you, you sir you have to you have to become you have to become what you knew bilkul will if you know the truth you have to become the truth yes yes otherwise mere knowing is rationality yes mere and knowing that, is rationality yes and mere sensing mere sensing is empiricality but becoming is rationality a eh, spirituality you have to become thank you thank you sir sir please tell please tell. okay no no, no that, that's the point actually uh, that's the, that's the point actually um, so having the discriminative knowledge but acting in a different way that is not uh-huh. so go, uh-huh. so go go by what you know is spirituality spirituality so, uh, having, having the knowledge and transforming your knowledge to the real karma that would define your spirituality and here spirituality doesn't mean a belief in a divine force or something like that it is spirituality here is the knowledge of your own knowledge okay sir 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 i'm just last example i shall yes. give you yes sir particularly i am telling you that when we we take food when we take food the that food becomes our blood that food becomes our energy okay uh, similarly when we take knowledge that knowledge should become our personality that knowledge should transform us we should become that knowledge as we become our food in the form of a blood and energy similarly we should become our knowledge because because we are intaking knowledge we are getting that knowledge that is the real education thank you yes sir thank you thank you sir uh, for your uh, comments well i don't see any question i just see a uh, good compliments from shravani misra madam i should be very much thankful to her for being connected with philosophy family and also making a financial contribution for uh, um the competitions that were held under uh, the banner of philosophy family I should thank her from the core of my heart and this speaks her sense of involvement and uh, her uh, sense of um, say um, say say a sort of sacrifice for uh, all good work and i hope she will continue her uh, support to philosophy family and keep on attending to our um, webinars thank you so much madam now uh, over to uh, um, uh, 
Swarnalata Tripathi Madam to propose a formal vote of thanks. Pranam to everybody. Today, Pramusa delivered a talk on claims of rationalism. He explained the fact that rationalism claims clear understanding of truth through intuition and deduction. Our knowledge and morality should be as perfect as no. <coughs> mathematical equation. Pure thought is virtue and that leads to a virtuous life. Dr. K. Om Narayan Rao sir moderated the session and gave a beautiful synopsis of the talk. We salute his beautiful coordination with us in all respects. We are grateful to him for his great contribution for the academic pursuit. We thank all the participants for participating in the discussion. Their presence is our inspiration.